Welcome back, Dr. Aaron Chadwick, part of Your Nutrition Physicians. Do you suffer from chronic achy joint pain, pain in your ankles, your knees, your elbows, your shoulders, for no particular reason? Well, let me tell you, there's a few reasons why it happens, and tonight we're talking about a major part of that. Tonight we're talking about poop and pain. You're probably thinking to yourself, what's the relationship between poop and pain? Well, let's discuss it. You have to understand a little bit about your digestive system, so stay with me here. I promise, knowledge is wisdom. You're going to learn some things that's going to bless you. So, we have our digestive system. We have different types of foods. We have fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Now, they're long molecules. When we, when we put a piece of chicken, for example, in our mouth, we chew it, we break it down, we swallow it. Our stomach has hydrochloric acid. It digests the protein a little bit. It goes into your intestines, and there's 22 feet of intestinal tract. The, the piece of chicken travels down there and slowly gets digested. So by the time that piece of protein, piece of chicken gets down, it's broken down into smaller, smaller molecules. Same thing happens with carbohydrates. They get broken down into sugars, and fats get broken down into fatty acids. Now, as they travel down your intestinal system, right, they come down in here, there's actually little pores, little holes in your intestinal system wall. That's, that's normal, perfectly normal. So because when the foods, these, these particles of foods get broken down smaller, they come down to the intestines, they go through these little holes and go into your bloodstream. From your bloodstream, they travel over to your liver, and then your liver tells the foods where to go in your body. Now, if, the, if you are constipated. Now, constipation, the definition of constipation is not moving your bowels at least one time per day and a good bowel movement. So it should be nice LBS, long, brown, and smooth. If they're little pellets, that's not normal. If it's squeezed and skinny and stringy, that is not healthy. That is not a good bowel movement. We need LBS because that, that Food, if it's not broken down correctly, will cause you those kind of symptoms. Now, if that food is sitting here for too long, there's bad bacteria that live in here, and they eat that food, and then they create irritation on the wall of your intestines. So the combination of bad bacteria with the foods not being broken down cause those pores, the holes in your intestinal wall, to stretch and get bigger. That's called inflammation. We don't want inflammation because those pores get bigger, and now the big particles of food get into your body, into your bloodstream. They're supposed, they're supposed to be small, broken down, but they're large because they're sitting there for too long. So what happens is your immune system sends out your white blood cells, the WBCs. The white blood cells come over to the food. It's a big, long particle and says, I don't know who you are. I'm going to attack you. So your white blood cells attack these particles of food, and there's a battle there. The debris from that battle, all that debris is in your bloodstream. Now you have dirty blood. Now, those particles of debris of the food and the white blood cells, they settle in your joints. Some people settles down into your big toe. We call that gout. Some people, it settles in your elbow. We say you have tennis elbow or golfer's elbow. Some people, these food particles and debris settle in your wrists. We say you have carpal tunnel syndrome. Some people, it settles in your foot. We say you have plantar fasciitis. Those are just all fancy terms. All that means is chronic pain and inflammation caused by not moving your bowels, not pooping every single day. So what's the solution? The solution is some four simple things you can do. Number one, chew your food 20 times each bite. It sounds elementary and simple, but do it. I promise you. If you follow these suggestions for six weeks, you're going to see a great reduction in your chronic, achy joint pain. Now, chewing your food 20 times. Why? Because you're going, to die, you're going to chew the food. You have enzymes in your saliva that helps you break down your food. When you swallow the food, it goes into your stomach. That, that takes the pressure off of your stomach and off of your intestines, so it's not so irritating to your intestines when you chew your food. So it greatly reduces the inflammation. So do that, that's important. Do not drink liquids with your meals. Why? Because even water, water, soda, especially soda, um, caffeine like uh, coffee or tea, do not drink liquids with your foods. Why? Because it dilutes your stomach acid. If your stomach acid is diluted, you don't digest your food very well, so you can't break down your fats, your proteins, and your carbs very well. You're going to irritate your intestines. You're not going to be able to move your bowels very well, and you're going to have chronic pain from all the inflammation that you get from that. So make sure you never drink liquids with your meals. You can drink it after your meal, about 15, 20 minutes, but don't drink it during the meal. Number three, reduce acid foods. Acid 
creates inflammation in your body. The most acid foods are sugary type foods. So desserts, cakes and cookies and ice creams, reduce the intake of those and I promise you your chronic achy joint pain will get much better. Now, if you reduce those acid foods, have them, if you have to have them, have them on the weekends, maybe once or twice a week at most because those are gonna create the problem. What happens with these acid foods is, is that when, you, when they come down your digestive system and they go into your bloodstream, the acid foods, the body doesn't like the acid. So what it'll do is it'll pull out your minerals from your joints and it'll make your joints weak. In other words, the calcium and the magnesium, which are very good for your joint tissues, and the collagen that's in your joint tissues, gets, it gets uh, worn away because of the acid foods. So if you get off the acid foods, you can regenerate your joint cells. And that's another thing. You don't have to live with chronic pain for the rest of your life. And I'm going to say another thing. Using painkillers, strong painkillers that are prescribed for you, have a lot of side effects. Be careful because they can cause you to have ulcers. And they can cause you to have kidney problems. So don't use these, these strong painkillers for too long. So, and if you reduce the acid foods, do these things, I'm telling you, you don't have to rely upon those as much. Okay, the fourth thing, increase your fiber. Now, some people think about fiber in a container, like, uh, like psyllium husk or metamucil. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about fiber that comes from healthy food choices, from eating fruits and vegetables and whole grains. I guarantee you, if you increase your fruits and vegetables every day by one, in the next few days, you're going to see your bowel movements greatly increase and be much more healthy because the fruits and vegetables contain natural fibers, and those fibers help to bulk up the stool. When your stool is bulky, that's what you want because you want, it, you want the fiber to pull in the water into your intestines to make you have a nice LBS, long, brown, and smooth bowel movement. That's what we're looking for. So fiber can help you do that. Now, fiber also is food for your probiotics. You may have heard about probiotics. They live in our intestines. They're naturally there. And those probiotics, you may have heard, like acidophilus. We know that yogurt contains probiotics. But let me give you a little secret. Yogurt causes constipation for a lot of people. So instead of getting your probiotics from yogurt, get your probiotics from fermented foods. Like you can have sauerkraut or pickled beets or pickled cucumbers, pickles. Those are very good for you because they're fermented and the fermentation process helps to make more good bacteria. And again, when you eat more fiber in your diet, you're gonna help you move your bowels better so you can pull out any toxins that get accumulated in your intestinal wall and you can reduce the inflammation in your body, okay, by increasing your fiber intake. So you need about 35 grams to 50 grams of fiber. 35 grams of fiber equates to about seven teaspoons of fiber. So having five to nine servings of fresh fruits and vegetables each and every day with one or two servings of whole grains, like whole grain brown rice, whole grain pasta, whole grain bread. I love sprouted bread and also sourdough bread because they contain the nutrients that have a lot of fiber, these breads, and the breads, especially sourdough, means it has been fermented, so it's good for your microbiome. It's good for your intestinal bacteria. This is Dr. Chadwick, part of Your Nutrition Physicians. Please share this video, like it, share it, join us, uh, follow us on, uh, um, on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and join us. We're going to be starting uh, coming up Monday, every Monday at 7 p.m. for one hour, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be answering your questions and answers, all your questions and answers about foods, about fibers, about your health. My wife, Dr. Juan, and I would love to help you. We are here to help you with that. Thank you so much. God bless you guys.